Hello and welcome to You Don't Know If You Don't Go. Today we are going to expose Mother Nature for the average person to understand. Meteorology is a vast and complex subject, but to understand it, you need only simplify a couple of key symbols in order to make broadcast information work for you. Picnics, barbecues, painting the house, boating, bicycling, fishing, and hunting. Once you understand these few key symbols, you are no longer reactive to Mother Nature, but can plan your time outdoors days in advance. So you promotional fishermen, competitive outdoorsmen, weekend warriors. If you're the person that looks at radar images to see where the weather's going, or when it's going to get here, this one's a game changer. Stay tuned. There is more to weather than wind direction and radar, and with some basic knowledge of fronts and pressure systems, you can stay ahead of Mother Nature. Fronts are fronts, and systems are systems. The two are not alike. They do merge together like pasta and sauce, however, except where the two systems are concerned. High pressure systems and low pressure systems do not mix. For everything else, it's fair game. Think of fronts as big, slow, moving piles of air temperature. The pile can be warm, the pile can be cold, or the pile can be stationary. There are a lot of others, but I'd like to keep this simple for everybody to understand. Our weather here moves from west to east. When a warm front comes through, wind direction in front of it runs along a thin boundary from south to north and then the warm air temperature arrives and remember warm air rises. When a cold front comes through wind direction changes after the air temperature boundary passes and prevails from the north. And remember cold air descends. It's denser. Warm fronts are shown as red lines on a weather map. They have round bubbles on them to show their warmth. Cold fronts are shown as blue lines on a weather map and they have spear points on them to show their hostility. Stationary fronts are shown as a mixture of the two and show red bubbles and blue spear tips on them. Stationary fronts can produce a fair walleye bite depending. They are stationary so they don't really move do they? Not much. So what is it that affects change to the ambient condition of an air mass? They are called pressure systems. They come in two forms, high and low. Think of them as tractors that move and pull piles of air along. When a front comes through, it's either being pushed from behind or it's being pulled by a pressure system. When it's being pulled by a pressure system, the front is said to be associated with a pressure system. Pressure systems do come by themselves, bringing only their own characteristics. When this is so, there is said to be a lack of frontal activity. High pressure systems are large curls of wind spinning clockwise and outward, descending from top to bottom. They stabilize air masses and you can think of them as putting positive pressure on the Earth's surface. The barometer then goes up. Low pressure systems are large vortexes of wind spinning counterclockwise and ascending inward from bottom to top. They destabilize air masses and you can think of them as Mother Nature's vacuum cleaners sucking pressure away from the Earth's surface. Here's a tip, when the vacuum's dirt bag gets full, it sits on the northeast corner of the low, causing a lot of trouble. This one makes the barometer fall and the bite for fishermen, it goes with it after the front passes. Low pressure means possible precipitation. A cold front means a drastic change in ambient conditions, and for fishermen, you can be on a decent bite in front of a cold front 
and within minutes of its passing, they'll vacate and go deep on you. Give yourself a three-day window after cold front passage for the bike to return. Same thing for thunderstorms. Speaking of thunderstorms, Herr Professor Heinrich von Flüchenbürger. <coughs> My friends call me Schnatz. Here's this thing about the thunderstorms. Warm air is lighter and less dense. Cold air is denser and heavier. Warm air rises and cold air descends. Exit uh, the professor. When a fast-moving cold front displaces warm moist air upwards, it rises to a point where it loses its heat, becomes dense, and falls again. In the summer, when there's a lot of hot, moist air moving upwards, this process repeats itself quickly. The falling air heats up again, picks up more water molecules, and heads upward again from the rising action. Rain happens because the rising air particles pick up dust and airborne debris, aka condensation nuclei, and when they rise enough to cool off, the air displaces its moisture and becomes dense again. The moisture then condenses onto the impurities and they both fall downward. What falls through the bottom is rain. What comes out the top of a thunderstorm is the result of the magnified, intensified, repeated violence of the up and down cycle frozen beyond condensation, recognized as hail. The air gives up its water, the water freezes, spin cycles a while, gathers more mass and energy, and out the top it comes. There is good news, folks. The life cycle of the average thunderstorm is about two hours. The bad news is, Dead cells can regenerate. All they need is more rising, moist air. To explain tornadoes, you have to understand the jet stream. There is a river of wind that lives at about 45,000 feet over North America. It separates warm and cold climate zones and slides north and south relative to the time of year. It's called the jet stream and it flows at about 300 miles per hour. If your thunderstorm becomes a purple monster with tops reaching to 50,000 and it interacts with the jet stream, it can spin and you should be prepared to seek emergency shelter. Even if you are 40 miles away watching it destroy people's farms on the way by, chances are the fishing bite's probably off and you should be thinking about getting your boat out of the water and back home as safe as possible. Unless you know there's nothing behind it and fish are jumping in the boat. Then I might stay a while and take pictures, that sort of thing. But if you need to trailer home, you might want to time your drive so you avoid facing the prospect of damaging winds. On the water is no place to be when Mother Nature tears up. Well, that's the show. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to join us next time on... You don't know if you don't go.